Hello folks, here's a guide for floors 11 and 12 for the new Spiral Abyss in version 3.5. I will give some helpful tips on each floor and which elements are good to bring. But if your team does enough damage, then you can ignore the elemental advantage. First off, the Leyline Disorder is 75% bonus pyro damage, so use that to your benefit. For floor 11, first half, bring a pyro unit to help break the annoying Cryo Sison Mage's shields. The Pyro hit can also help with the Vulture in Chamber 1. Electro will also help with the Scorpion, but you don't really need both elements. The team for the second half should have a strong Pyro DPS to quickly take down the Hydro Cube at the end, but that's optional. And having Cryo helps a lot. They can break the Hydro Mage's shields faster and help freeze all the Ocean Hit Mimics. And bring a healer or a tanky unit to help survive the Mimic explosions. Chamber 1 first half contains two waves of enemies. The samurai at the beginning should be killed together. If one dies early, the other will heal a lot of HP and become immune to crowd control. If your carry does single target damage, then focus one halfway down then switch to the other. Be patient and burst them both down together. You will save more time by waiting for the right moment instead of rushing and letting them heal. Another trick to handle the samurai pair is to just freeze them and prevent them from completing the healing animation. Your usual freeze team works just fine here. The second wave has the pyro and electro animals. They both have a lot of melee attacks, so you will have no trouble grouping them together. The vulture has extra pyro resistance, and the scorpion has extra electro resistance. But the reason we want to bring the matching element is to quickly break the crystal that they summon. You can break the crystal by hitting it with non-matching elemental damage 6 times, or hit it with the matching element just once. When you break these crystals, the enemy will be paralyzed and take extra damage, so use this chance to finish them off. Chamber 1 second half also has two waves of enemies. At the start, run next to the female Eremite, the other two are melee and will run towards you. Then you can just AoE them down after they group up. Nothing too special here. Wave 2 is the annoying one. 3 Hydro Abyss Mages. This is why we want a Cryo unit. Cryo does the most damage to the shields and freezes them from doing their annoying attacks. Dendro also does good damage, so you can use that too. When they spawn, run behind one of them and make the other two mages teleport to you and group up. One of the mages will have a bubble aura, which will summon bubbles around you every 12 seconds. Freezing them will not stop this, but you can break the bubbles with any AoE attack or your normal attack. Just do your best to break the mage's shields and focus on the shieldless mage one at a time. The last thing you want is for the mage to recover and recast her shield again, wasting even more time. Chamber 2 first half has two waves. The first group are the usual Fatui that you always see. The Cryo Gunner will have an Ice Prison Aura, but you should focus on the Hydro Gunner first since they can heal the others. The Enamel Boxer will run to you, so ignore that. If you focus on the ground, you'll see if the Ice Prison is about to spawn beneath you, so dash when you see that little indicator. If the Geo Chanter puts up a shield, use Claymore or Geo Attack to quickly destroy it. It is fine if you have neither since the shield is fairly weak anyway. Save this unit for last. The second wave can be pretty annoying since you can get frozen a lot. Having a pyro unit helps a lot here. Focus on the two Sison mages first, then use pyro to quickly shred their shields. You can also defeat the flying adds to break the shield, but there's so many of them and they are annoying to chase down, so I usually just focus on the mage instead. After the two mages are dead, Finish off the Mirror Maiden. If you are not running a Pyro unit and have some strong DPS, then focus on the Maiden first. After she is dead, you don't have to worry about being trapped or frozen, so you can finish off the Sison Mages in relative peace. Remember, if the shield is too hard for you to destroy because you don't have a Pyro unit, defeating all the flying adds will also remove the shield. Chamber 2 second half is just 3 waves of Ocean Hit Mimics. All of them except the two cranes on wave 3 are melee, so you don't have to worry about grouping them up. Having a cryo unit will make this very easy. Freezing them stops their offense and even the damage aura around the ducks. 
either burn them down with free vaporized reactions and that juicy 75% pyro bonus, or freeze them and slowly take them out. One thing to worry about are the explosions from killing the frogs and blue jays. You can run far away from the explosion, switch to a tanky unit, time an iframe dash, which is kinda hard actually, or use the invincibility from a burst. Once you get to wave 3, Take down the two cranes first since they like to fly away, then AoE the rest. Chamber 3 first half is the Mushroom Chicken Boss. You can check out my detailed guide on fighting it with the pop-up thingy on the top right. In general, there are three ways to fight this boss. With Electro, with Pyro, or with Neither. Using Neither or both will balance the chickens and rage meter and it will continue to just use normal attack. The pyro version is the worst one since the boss can spawn extra tanky adds. You can hit the seeds with pyro to destroy them before they hatch, but there's no real benefit from using pyro this time besides the leyline bonus damage. For the electro version, if you hit the boss enough to max the enrage meter, it will do 2-3 buff attack then fall over and get staggered for about 15 seconds, which lets you do your full DPS rotation. Finally, Chamber 3 second half, we have the Hydro Cube. Once again, for a more detailed guide, check out the top right link thingy once again. A Pyro Carry will be the strongest here thanks to free Vaporize and Leyline bonus. But if you don't have a Pyro Carry, the fight still works the same, it might take a little longer. At the start, the boss will explode doing some damage, then become open to attacks. Here is your best chance to take off some HP. When it recovers, run towards the dark blue slime, but do not attack it. Touch it to make it explode, and if you do it fast enough, the slime's explosion will hit the boss, opening its core for another DPS window. Try not to let the heal slime hit the boss. Body blocks the bullet to steal the heals for yourself. Some other attacks that expose the core are the end of the incoming tidal waves, the manta ray slam, and the water ring that opens up and summons a whole bunch of dolphins. When you eventually drop its HP, the boss will have a final phase. It will shoot three hydro slimes that slowly move towards the boss. Destroy these three slimes with non-hydro elemental attacks. You will usually need at least two characters to destroy all three slimes in one go, but Kole, Ganyu, or Tainari can solo them with their char shots since those don't have long cooldowns like elemental skills. Ayaka and Catalyst users with good elements will also work here too. On to floor 12. This floor does not have a leyline disorder, so no extra bonuses here. The important enemies are in Chamber 1 and 3. Chamber 1 has the Frost Herald in the first half. Having at least one Pyro unit will make his shield melt a lot faster. In the second half, the two Hydro Heralds are weak to Dendro and Cryo attacks. Dendro does more damage, but Cryo does freeze them for a little bit. If you want to 3 star this chamber, I recommend making a specific team for the heralds, then use a different team to clear all 3 chambers. Well, you could use the same team, but a different run at least. The second chamber has nothing special. A normal Magu Kenki and 6 armored knights. AoE does help a bit for the second half. Chamber 3 has two Frost Lava Churros in the first half, so the Pyro unit from earlier also helps with this chamber. The second half is the annoying Weenut boss. It's not hard since the boss has very easy attack patterns, but it keeps running away with limited DPS windows. Having two on-field DPS will make this a lot faster. You alternate between each DPS when the boss pops up since their ability should be on cooldown between DPS windows. Here is the team setup I use. Both teams will need a healer. I'm using a pyro DPS in the first half with Bennett to apply more pyro, and my freeze team on the second half to deal with the hydro abyss. A hyper bloom team is also great here, since the dendro does even more damage, and hyper bloom is very strong as well. I just don't have Nahida on this account, so I went with another team. Chamber 1 first half has two waves. The three Uramites can be grouped up and burst it down. The lady has a fireball aura, but you can ignore that with a decent healer. She also has increased defense until you defeat the animal she summons. 
When the summon dies, she will get stunned. And while she's stunned, she takes extra pyro damage, so another benefit for a pyro team in the first half. The first wave is just a time waster for the cryo herald in wave 2. This herald has a lot of melee combos, and his attacks have a chance to lower your stamina. He also have combos that chases you if you are too far away. A general tip is to stay near the herald until his sword glows white, then either move away or use a burst. If you are doing your DPS rotation, you can also just ignore dodging if the stamina damage doesn't affect your rotation too much. His health goes away pretty quickly, but the annoying part is his shield. Pyro does the most damage to this shield, followed by electro attack. After he gets a shield, the herald will always do an AoE slam that will steal your stamina. Dash or burst when he slams down to avoid this attack. Follow a similar pre-shield strat and keep using Pyro and Electro until the shield goes away. You can also infuse a Nemo Burst with Pyro to do some extra damage. As mentioned earlier, you should do separate attempts to get 3 stars. On a team that's doing all 3 chambers, take your time and use your skills to get enough energy particles to fill up before the next chamber starts. Chamber 1 second half is more annoying than the first half. The 3 Urmites are similar to the first half, except the summoner this time is weak to Dendro after the summon is defeated. One of them also has a bubble aura, which can be annoying if not defeated quickly. Same strat as before, group and burst them down. The next wave have two annoying Hydro Heralds that we have seen many times before. They like to do a slanted whirlwind attack, shoot projectiles, and their attacks can also increase your skill cooldowns. Try to group them up by going near the edge of the arena, and make a straight line with you and the two heralds. This will usually help get the farther one to stack up. Dendro does the most damage to their water shield, so Hyperbloom does great against both waves in the second half. Cryo also does decent damage and freezes them. Same deal with the first half. If you want to get 3 stars, focus on using all your elemental abilities to clear in time if you are going for the full clear, and use him to charge up your burst for the next chamber. I feel chamber 2 is the easiest one on floor 12. The first half is just a normal Magu Genki. He is invincible during his get up animation at the start. You can use this time to get some more particles, or just prep your supports and defense shred abilities. At 70% HP, he will change phases and get his cryo and enamel ghost. He also turns invincible again, and does not take damage for about 8 seconds. Make sure to iframe or burst through his giant wind slam, because it does a lot of damage, and can one-shot squishy characters. Then build energy and avoid using your damage abilities until he starts taking damage again. His patterns are the same as the normal version, so you can check out my detailed boss guide for him on the top right. General tip is to keep chasing him and stick close to the boss, since there's less attacks to worry about when you are on top of him. Chamber 2's second half brings more smaller enemies. Wave 1 have 3 knights, none of them have any aura or anything really noticeable, just treat them like the previous groups and AoE them down. Each one has a shield ability, but that's about it. Wave 2 is slightly different, there's a big fatty knight with the rumbling stone aura this time. When wave 2 starts, run to the blue sword knight to group them up. The Sword Knight has some range attacks, so it's easier to lear the other two melees to the sword. The Axe Knight's aura causes damaging earth waves. You can ignore it with strong heals, but if you are running Kuki or a mini healer, then dash away from them. Focus on the Axe Knight first if the earth wave are a threat to your team. The only noteworthy attack is the giant shield that the Axe Knight puts up. The shield will block all damage from the front, so stop attacking and go behind them. However, if you are running a freeze team, you can freeze them and still keep doing damage from the front. This works the same as the shield from the big healing churls. Either go behind or freeze them. Besides that, keep attacking until they die. You will most likely cleave one of the smaller knights to death before the big axe boy goes down. Chamber 3 first half has 3 beefy enemies. The Ruin Guard has the Rumbling Stone Aura again, but that enemy is easy to deal with. Burst him down or shoot the weak spots twice to disable it. 
After that, two lava churros will spawn and they both have an aura. The one with the frozen swirl will put an ice prison under you every 12 seconds. The one with a large blue ring will increase your stamina usage while inside. Both are annoying, but go for the one that's worse for your team. Having multiple pyro units here can quickly melt their ice armor so you can do some real damage. Not much else for the first half. Don't worry about grouping them up since they will both be sticking on you like flies. Chamber 3 second half is really annoying to finish with 3 stars. The boss have super easy attacks to avoid, but it keeps diving underground all the time. You will have a very short DPS window, so having two different on-field DPS can make this fight shorter. Alternate your DPS rotation each time the boss surfaces. It usually comes up too quickly for one carry to get their cooldowns back, but with two carries, each one can do most of the rotation every time the boss comes up. I also have a detailed guide on all its attack pattern and special attack in the video on the top right. The special attack happens after the boss hits 50% health or 1 minute half past. The obvious signal is getting a message telling you to swirl elements. The boss will spawn 6 anemo orbs. You will need to hit 2 orbs with pyro, hydro, electro, or cryo to stun the boss. Having an archer with one of those elements makes this really easy. But you can also hit them with large AoE skills. For example, both Ayaka and Kokomi's elemental skill can hit the bottom orb and the one floating above it. Raiden Shogun's coordinated attack also does a trick for Hyper Bloom teams. Your reward for swirling two orbs is a 10 second DPS window. If the boss is not dead yet, then keep doing whatever damage you can during the short time the boss comes above ground, and wait for this special attack again in 60 seconds. Hope you enjoy this Spiral Abyss guide. I might make this a series every time the layout changes to help folks out. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful, or what I should change about the format. Thanks for sticking around, subscribe and click that like button, it really helps out, and as always, have fun out there traveler.